Welcome to the Bob and Brian Show. I'm Brian Feller, and my co-host is Bob Fry. And we want to take a few minutes to talk about Thanksgiving. Bob, give us some thoughts on this. You know, Brian, th this is uh, Thanksgiving in a coronavirus world. And we've had nothing but bad news for months and months and months. Uh, there's lots of legitimate suffering in the world. Um, but it's kind of helpful to take a historical perspective. Uh, the first Thanksgiving was in, in, in 1621, the year after the Pilgrims landed at Plymouth. Uh, and that first winter, the winter of 1620, half the Pilgrims died. Wow. Half. Wow. There were 102 people on the ship and 47, 48 died. And, uh, but they had a, they had a good crop. They grew a lot of corn. They had enough fish and this, the other thing that they were set for the winter. And so they decided to give thanks to God mm. and they had a party and they invited the local Indians on with whom they were on good terms. The native Americans, they were on good terms. They had peace with the native Americans for 50 years mm. under King Massasoit. And uh, the, the, the native Americans came to the party, 90 of them. And they stayed for three days and they, they brought five deer with them. <laughs> and so, and so they shot their bows and arrows, and the uh, the pilgrims shot their muskets. It was it was a, a wonderful celebration mm. uh, after incredible suffering. Wow! And and I just think it's helpful for us to to remember that. Yeah, it just kind of blows your mind. What what's so surprising about that is that, you know we're, we're we kind of look at history differently and differently and differently. And but if you just look at it at face value. It was a pretty magical time. And, uh, you know, yeah. we, we want to put all kinds of other cultural nonsense on it. But but at the time, it was a pretty magical time. People had a, had a terrible year of suffering and they decided to give things and, and have a party. What a fantastic thing. And uh, I mean, we, we can learn a lot from that just by itself. Yeah. And what a great Christian witness. I mean, the the New Testament is written at a time when. Uh, the, the Christian church is largely made up of Roman slaves. They have no political power. And yet Paul writes things like, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, mm -hmm. for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We need to be giving thanks in all circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the middle of coronavirus cr uh, crisis, we need to be giving thanks. Yeah, yeah. I was just uh, reading an article about the longevity and uh, how the non-physiological factors are actually more responsive for our longevity. And one of these things is gratitude. And so we're, we're starting to understand, even from a scientific standpoint, that maybe 30, 40 percent of what we do is, you know, diet and fitness. And the other part is our outlook on life and generosity and gratitude just has a way of uh, bringing us back down from our angry, powerful, fish-shaking self who is dissatisfied with everything, and it just centers us. I, I think of that Psalm 131 where David says, my eyes are not haughty, my, eyes, my heart is not proud. I don't concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me, but I've stilled and quieted my soul. And gratitude is what is the vehicle that we still and quiet our souls and we don't become like culture. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember, but um, you gave me this book, 1,000 Gifts. And I, I wrote in the beginning of it, it was uh, August of 2012, eight years ago. Right? <laughs> wow, time flies. Do you, yeah, yeah. Do you remember how you found this book? Do you remember why? You know, I, uh, I picked it up and I started reading it. I don't remember why I started reading it, but it just spoke to me. And at first, it's very um, kind of hard to read being a male. It, it's, you know, I, I was probably the only <laughs> male that re re read that book when it came out. But, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, Ann Voskamp had just been through some really hard things. And she kind of came to this point of saying, I'm going to be thankful for little things like bubbles when I do the dishes. And, um, uh, Actually, you've seen, you see my blog, my adventure blog kind of came out of that. And my adventure blog yeah. was kind of my response to that, which was, I want to be grateful every time I go outside and do something and I'm going to write about it. And uh, so it was a pretty, pretty, I would say it's on the top five books I've ever read. 
You know what? I completely agree. I've probably read it five or six times since you gave it to me. And I am singularly impressed. Now, there's no question that this is a bit of a chick book. Okay? She has millions of followers, <laughs> mostly women on our website. I've, I've sat outside Starbucks reading this. And I have had on multiple <laughs> occasions, I have had women walk up to me and they would not normally do this and say, oh, I've read that book. It is so wonderful. You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it's she's also amazingly insightful. There's some real theology here mm. that's profound. Uh, I, I want to talk about two of those things right now. She talked about what's the what was the actual sin in the garden? Yeah. Yeah. What, it, what was it that Adam and Eve did? And I've always heard, oh, it was pride. It was this. It. She said, she wrote, um, Satan's sin became the first sin of all humanity, the sin of ingratitude. Mm. Adam and Eve are simply painfully ungrateful for what God gave. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, that, you think about it. They had the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> God gave them the whole world and it wasn't enough. They wanted something mm. more. And she, from there, she pivots. And I know I'm telling you things you already know. She pivots from ingratitude to maybe gratitude is kind of the answer to how we live our life. And she does an extended reflection on Eucharisteo, yeah, yeah. which is which is gratitude <clears throat> in the Greek. Um, and of all the things she writes on that, the one that has stuck with me the most, um, she wrote, Eucharisteo, Thanksgiving, always precedes the miracle. Mm. And she talks about how how Jesus routinely gives thanks before the miracle. Mm. So when he goes to feed the 5,000, he takes the bread and he breaks it and he gives thanks. And then the miracle mm. occurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when he, when he stands outside the tomb and Lazarus is in there for four days and he says, Father, I thank you that you've heard my prayers. I know you always hear me. I'm saying that for the benefit of the people mm. here. And then he says, Lazarus, come out, right? Even if you and I were completely convinced we were called to heal and raise the dead, we would still say, Lazarus, come out. And then we would say, yeah, thank you yeah, afterwards, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> it worked. Okay. Yeah. No? And this notion of this notion of giving thanks, Jesus always gives thanks before the miracle. Mm, yeah. And on the night that he's betrayed, he takes the bread and he breaks mm. it. Right. And that's that's three days before the miracle of the resurrection. Yeah. And and it's just Powerful, yeah. wonderful. And also before the hard times, too, and in the hard times. Uh, and in the hard yeah. times, yeah, yeah. Has um, anything surprised you uh, in terms of, like, benefits during the coronavirus mess we've been living through? You know, I've, I've stuck with this. Uh, you know, my, my soul has been at war. You know, you, you, you and I have both talked about this idea of politics as pornography, and my addiction <laughs> to politics and, and that, you know, just reading the news seems to just elicit the exact opposite of gratitude for me. Uh, and so yeah. I, I have to keep going back to gratitude to get my soul stilled and quieted. Otherwise, you just become a really angry, miserable person. And uh, and we're not able to connect with the Lord. I think the Lord wants to speak to us. He wants to do things, but he, he really can't. He's not going to do that if we're addicted to something stupid. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, gratitude's been a big deal for me, and I'm working at it. I've, I, you know, I've read about those addictions. <laughs> I, I know some people who have some. Uh, you know, it's interesting. My one of my addictions has been uh, going out for coffee in the morning, like almost every morning for thirty years. I've gotten in my truck and driven someplace or walked. <laughs> when I was closer okay, right? and uh, to, to Starbucks and sat there and a couple hours and uh, whatever and, and read and, and I've called that my quiet time and so on. And uh, not being able to do that, especially in the first month or so of the coronavirus crisis forced me to stay home. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that I can actually make coffee at home and where I'm living, I'm saving half an hour of driving, 15 minutes each way. And my devotional time and prayer time in the morning has been much better mm. and, and, and quieter and 
more rewarding and allowing me to go deeper in God's word and to pray better. I mean, it's just been, it's been better at every perspective because I was forced to stay mm. home. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that's been, that's been really good. Well, we've got a lot of stuff to be thankful for. And I think the point of, this video was just a, a reminder. I mean, it seems like we shouldn't have to remind ourselves to be thankful, but I have to remind myself every day to be thankful. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I think the Lord smiles on that. And I think gratitude is the antidote for so much of what's going on this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, you and I are so blessed to get to do the work that yeah, we do. Yeah. That help people give. Yeah, yeah. Um, the NCF staff people back in Atlanta, that's been hard on them. Atlanta's been shut down hard. Yeah, yeah. They can, they continue, you and I continue to have this experience of calling these people that are uh, working in back office and, and they're, they're cheerful. They're grateful. They're doing a good job. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing. We're blessed by it every day. Yeah. Well, we want to, as we close, we want to offer our listeners, if you want the book, 1000 Gifts by Ann Voskamp, we would love to send you a free copy. So just uh, fill out the form below this email and NCF will send you a copy because it is so good. It will change your life. And if you're a guy and, you know, you can't get into, you know, kind of a poetic <laughs> voice, it's okay. You'll live. It's, it's good for you. It's good for your soul. So, uh, <laughs> and I have a, I have a tip for those guys too, Brian, okay. if they go, if they take this book and they want to read it in a public place, <laughs> you know, then, then what you do is you grab a copy of like Jack Reacher. Okay. Novel. This is a, this is like a, a freelance bad guy, you know, beating up the bad guys kind of guy. And you just, you just, you just wrap it around the Voss camp book. Okay. And, and then you can sit there and just, oh, yeah, I'm just reading Jack Reacher because I'm a man's man. <laughs> <laughs> However you got to read it, read it because it's really good. Read it. It's a great book. All right. Well, everybody, uh, I'm Brian and uh, have a great, have Thanksgiving. A great Thanksgiving and we'll talk to you next time.